record this. Okay, welcome Pit Dog members. Um, today we have our very own Grossman Yannickan Ford consultant, Chris Dons. And we also have Jim O'Mara as a color commentator for, and he's our senior manager. Um, the topic today is NetSuite's fixed asset management uh, leases. And uh, I've recorded. Go ahead, Chris, take it away. I'm going to mute. If you, if um, anyone has any questions, you can put it in the chat or you can wait till the end. However, you want to handle it is fine. I'll, I'll keep an eye on chat, but I'm going to go ahead and mute. Chris, go ahead and start. All right. Sounds good. Everyone can hear me. I imagine, right? And then, all right. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So as Rhonda had mentioned, you know, we're going to dive into fixed assets module, um, specifically leases here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just review which topics we're going to be looking at today. So for the specific topics that we're going to be covering, right, so we're going to look at, you know, the lease record, some general information as far as, you know, the system setup, so the FAM system setup, um, the asset type setup. So, you know, that is in, you know, following the same pattern as far as, you know, any other assets that have to be created, right? You have to have an asset type set up for that asset creation to be able to use, you know, the asset proposal and anything along those lines. And then the lease record itself. So just reviewing some of the fields on the lease record. Um, and then another topic we're gonna be looking at um, as far as, you know, the lease, lease module, right, is that lease payment amortization schedule, which is actually a sub tab on the lease record itself. Um, the lease journal that has created as a result of the lease record, the leased asset creation, and then, you know, the leased asset record. So taking a look and seeing, you know, the specific sub tab that actually, you know, populates some information related back to the lease that the asset was created from. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So as I've mentioned, we're gonna dive into some of the more general information at the front end here. So here's just a, uh, you know, the lease module overview as presented, you know, some some com comments by NetSuite on their end. Um, we are, as Rhonda had mentioned, recording. So we'll actually, you know, have availability on everyone's ends as far as, you know, sending these slides out. So I'm not going to sit here and read this full paragraph, but this is just some comments, as I mentioned, as far as, you know, the lease accounting, the lease accounting module and feature as far as, you know, NetSuite is describing it. So... I'm not going to read the full thing, but when we get those slides out, feel free to, you know, take a glance at this, read through it, and then just have that information on your end. So, so as far as the lease record general info, as I mentioned as a topic, right, we have the system setup. So this SNP here is actually, you know, um, the system setup under the uh, fixed assets module. So there's a system setup specifically for the fixed asset module itself. So there are two specific checkboxes here that actually relate to leases themselves. So we have this use lease term as asset life checkbox. So what that actually does, it looks at you know the lease that you have created and uses that term as the lifetime for the asset that's created and related to that lease record in, its, in and of its own. So the lease record lifetime would actually take precedent over maybe you had an operating lease asset type set up for 15 months or 15 periods or something along those lines. And the lease record lifetime was 24 months. The 24 months would then take precedent over those 15 periods when this checkbox is checked. There is also down at the bottom left there that uh, allow lease modifications checkbox. So what that actually does, so it allows you to make modifications to the lease records themselves, such as interest rate, lease start date, lease end date as necessary, and, you know, records those specific gains losses as required based on those modifications that you are making. <clears throat> so the next kind of general information part here, right, we have the asset type. So this follows, you know, the, the specific or general, you know, kind of flow as far as the fixed asset module goes in and of its own. So when creating assets, right, for a proposal, we have, you know, those asset types that are associated with the assets. So just some, you know, information here as far as those asset types. So, you know, if, if the lease type were to be an operating lease, there actually is a checkbox to notify NetSuite and make note in the system, hey, this is an operating lease. Since operating leases are handled a little differently than finance leases based on, you know, that ownership of the asset, anything along those lines. So as previously mentioned, though, in the system setup, 
you know, whenever you set up an asset type, there is a lifetime that is associated with that asset type. Um, if you do have that use lease term as asset life checkbox checked, it will actually take precedent over that lifetime that's set up on the asset type for that specific, you know, lease asset type. So, and then, you know, it's similar to, you know, the other asset types as far as the, the lines of, you know, having to have an asset account, the appropriate accumulated appreciation account, and the lease depreciation amortization expense account. So essentially, you know, if you were an asset other than a leased asset, you would have that depreciation expense charge account as well. So similar flow along those lines as far as the asset type setup. And then this next slide here, I'm just going to show kind of um, what an, an asset type that I had set up for operating leases. So taking a look here, there's that, um, that checkbox for operating lease notifying and signifying that, hey, this is an operating lease and will be handled as appropriately to NetSuite kind of, you know, making that, that note there. So I also have the asset lifetime set up there as 24, but as previously mentioned, right, if we have this, the, the FAM system set up, set up to be um, the lease term, it would actually use the lease term rather than that 24 uh, period lifetime. So, and as mentioned, right, there's our general information, pretty consistent to other asset types and then the accounts as well. So these are pretty you know, consistent, but you would have your asset account, your depreciation account, so the contra to that asset account, um, and then the charge account. So this, that would be for the lease amortization expense, and then so on and so on. So I just used you know, the amortization account for the write-off, write-down, and the disposal cost. So, so looking at the lease record in and of its own, right, <clears throat> you have a lot of fields here. There are some that are playing into you know, the calculations and things more so than others. Um, so if you look, whenever you create the lease record essentially right you have the status of pending lease payments um, and the lease company there is a field too as well so that will actually be the entity and or name that's tagged to the liability component of the lease journal that's created so just an important note there uh, the lease contract number that's if you have an internal contract number you want associated with the specific specific lease record you can put that information there the asset description field that actually uh, will tag the journal as far as, you know, that, in, that line memo, as far as the asset description from the proposal, whenever that's created, this asset description will actually flow over to the asset when created via proposal. So it'll be tagged on the journal for the lease journal, as well as the asset. So this can get, you know, as granular as you want. So that'll actually, you know, depend on how granular you want to be as far as you know, the description on the asset that's created as a result of this lease. And then we have our rental frequency there. So currently, I believe it should only be monthly and annually, but with the new release coming out, um, there should be options for semi-annual semi leases as well as quarterly leases. So that'll be a newer feature. Um, we have our lease term there. So that's just you know the periods of this lease. So monthly, right, 24 months at this point, as far as this specific lease record goes. We have our annual interest rate, so that's going to be used to create or calculate, you know, the interest expense per month, anything along those lines. Um, and we have the lease start date, lease end date, pretty straightforward as far as those go. And then you have a checkbox here. So if something's a finance lease rather than an operating lease, you can actually make that, uh, you know, determination using that checkbox in the top right there. And then pretty consistent with a lot of, you know, the records in NetSuite, right? We have our classifications to so the specific sub subsidiary that the, the lease records is associated to, department, class, and location as well. And then on the lease record, right, if you can see at the bottom there, we have our posting reference. So this is going to be the right of use asset account. So essentially that asset account that we had associated with that operating lease asset type. So that'll be important to, you know, kind of line those up. So then whenever we run the proposal, right, for that specific asset type, the lease journal that's created will be captured as far as, you know, creating those assets. So we also have the lease liability accounts. So that would be the credit to the lease journal um, that's created. And then the interest expense account and then the gain loss on modification. So pretty straightforward as far as those accounts go. Um, you know, as far as your chart of accounts, you would just fill those out with your specific accounts that, you know, fit those, those fields. So... So then moving on here, we there is, if I go back here real quick, there's a sub tab uh, labeled lease amortization schedule. So 
the setup of the lease am lease payment amortization schedule is is required to be able to create the lease journal because uh, the amortization schedule actually calculates the MPV, the total MPV of um, the lease in and of its own. Um, so as I mentioned, right, that lease payment amortization schedule is created on that lease amortization schedule subtab of the lease record. As you can see, it's highlighted down there at the bottom. And then, so this is where this lease amortization schedule is where you would actually add the lease payments for that tw those 24 uh, periods, right? As far as the current or previous lease record we we're looking at. So you can either add these payments to the amortization schedule either manually. So going in one by one, see where it's, it says add at the bottom there, uh, 24 times essentially, which is kind of monotonous, right? So there actually is an automated feature. So if you go in there and select the start date, so let's say that, our first payment date will be on 131.23. The amount's gonna be a hundred bucks. We love our round numbers, right? And then select generate payments. Those 24 payments, so 131, 230, or 228, apologies, and then you know, so on and so forth for the end of the month, each month for 24 periods will actually be created and added to this amortization schedule, automatically just selecting that start date, the amount, and then selecting that generate payments button. So here's just a picture of what, you know, the updated amortization schedule would look like when using that automated feature or manually, however you'd want to attack that. Um, and as you can see as well, those lease summary fields, if I go back to the lease record, those are actually currently sitting at zero prior to updating this lease amortization schedule. So once that's created, uh, the lease amortization schedule would actually, you know, calculations done on the NetSuite end to create you know the total lease payments so that's that 20 or 100 bucks spread over you know 24 months to 2400 right and then the total mpv so that principal amount um, that's associated with those lease payments and then the interest amount and then the total lease liability based on that principle as well so kind of just went over this as well so whenever the amortization sales are completed those fields you know will be created or not created but auto-populated based on, you know, those calculations that are done in NetSuite as far as the amortization schedule that we had previously set up. So the status actually flips from pending lease payments to pending lease journal creation. So from here, there is actually a button to create the lease journal. So the lease module will actually go ahead and once you select that button, create a journal to realize, right, we want to have that debit for the uh, operating lease asset and then the credit for that lease liability you know, put those in our GL and on the books, right? So kind of just outlining this a little further to create the lease journal, we would select and or select the create lease journal button located at the top of the lease record. I like that on the previous slide as well. Um, and just to break down, kind of reemphasizing this, right? So the debit and credits, so the debit will be to the uh, right of use asset account that we had set up as far as, you know, the fields when we were creating that lease record. And then the lease liability account will be the credit for that journal as well. Uh, and then the total MPV amount. So that 2314 spot six, seven is actually going to be the amount for the debit and credit respectively for those asset and liability accounts. So once that journal is created, um, the status will actually change from journal created or from the pending lease journal creation to the journal being created. And then that journal that's created as a result of that lease journal being created is actually tagged on the lease record in and of its own under that transaction field there I highlighted on the right there. So there is a reference back to, you know, the RU asset debit and then that lease liability credit that are created from this, you know, lease record um, itself. And then just here's the journal that's created once again, emphasizing there's our debit to the RU asset account that we had assign, assigned on that posting reference tab and then a credit to that um, lease liability account, which I had set up as the long-term liability account. And then there's that total MPV flung over to the journal, as well as that segmentation classifications that we had assigned on the lease record. So, So as far as the asset creation, it follows, you know, kind of the same guidelines as far as any other fixed asset, right? So we have a proposal and then creation uh, from that proposal. So for this example, I had um, that le lease journal had been created at the beginning of the year since I had, you know, set up this lease start date to be 1-1-2023. And then 
just as any other asset proposal, right? We're going to set up our range here to go from start date to end date to, you know, kind of encompass that range from which this journal, uh, the lease journal would actually fall into. So start date 1-1, 2023, end date 131, 2023. And then as far as the asset types, this is a reference to that asset type that I had shown previously. So we have our operating lease asset type. And then since we had checked on that asset type that it was an operating lease, there actually is reference to that on this line as well uh, from the asset proposal saying, hey, this is an operating lease. So just some knowledge on that front of uh, where that's coming from as reference to an operating lease. So. So once the proposal has been processed, like I said, it's pretty standard fixed asset module pr uh, procedures, right? So then we'll have our uh, generation of assets from the proposal of it in, or from itself, right? Um, so then once we get to this screen, right, uh, manage proposals, we're going to generate the assets to actually create the least asset. And then from there, this is actually, um, you know, the asset that we had created from that lease record that we were looking at previously. So <clears throat> whenever the asset is created from that lease journal and that specific, you know, operating lease asset type, the checkbox for notifying or signal or mentioning that, you know, the, hey, this asset is a leased asset, there's actually a checkbox that whenever that proposal runs, it will actually check that this asset is leased. So there is that notation there. And then there is a lease sub tab. So I don't know if anybody has ever looked into this sub tab, right? So usually it's showing as blank if we're not creating, or not usually, it's going to show as blank if we're not generating an asset from a lease journal. But since we had, you know, proposed that asset and created it from that lease journal, it's actually flown over that lease information from that lease record that we had set up. So as you can see on that lease sub tab down there at the bottom, we have reference to our specific lease that the, you know, the, the asset was created from the leasing company, that contract number, the start date, and so on and so forth, up into, you know, that total lease payment there on the bottom right. So it's, it's really a good reference to where this asset was coming from and the lease attached to it as well. And then <clears throat> looking at this as well, um, so if we go back to that lease record after we had uh, proposed that asset and created it, you can actually, you know, have a reference. If you look on the right there that I've highlighted, it actually references that asset that the lease was, uh, that was created from the lease. So there is kind of that circular reference in a sense, right? The asset is referencing back to the lease, and now the lease is actually referencing back to the asset. So there is kind of that, you know, final tie there to pull the two together if there ever wasn't a, a need to reference one from the other. So, and then once that asset had been created, the lease record will actually, you know, change its status to being as asset created. So at this point, you know, the asset has been created, the lease record is good, and we're at that point. So. May have been a lot to take in, soak in. So I imagine there may be some questions. So I'm kind of opening up to you guys right as far as questions go. So either that or you did such a great job that no one <laughs> has a question. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it was a lot of information though. So it is. And and you know what? We've recorded it so we can post it. I'll I'll let everyone know when I post it on the Pit Dug web uh, website. Also, I will send a follow-up with the presentation. So Anyone, any questions, anyone? Speak now or forever hold your peace. No, you can always email us too. Yeah, more than happy to answer questions, you know, if anything comes up later on, so. Yeah, absolutely. You can just reach out through me and I can I can get them to, to Chris. But, uh, well, I don't think they do. So thank you, Chris, Jim, great commentary. <laughs> no, I know you were just here for the support. So um, no, I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for attending and I will follow up and this Pitnug webinar is over. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.